Welcome to the Truman Charities Podcast. I am Jamie Truman, your host. Today is Giving Tuesday. And I know a lot of you are thinking, I want to give, I want my family to get involved this holiday season or my business and coworkers, but I'm not really sure what to do, where to find an organization that resonates with me and how can I give within that organization? So as you know, Truman Charities podcast, I interview founders of nonprofits and it's sort of like a catalog for you. And I ask all the questions that somebody would want to know before they were to donate and or get involved within an organization. So I do all of the work so you don't have to sit down with different founders for coffee chats and really dive into their organization. I do that for you. I chose a few organizations to talk to you about today, and I put down the episode number where I interviewed them so you can go back and listen to that to get the more in-depth uh, look at that organization through the founder. But I just want to real quick go through a couple to give you some options for this Giving Tuesday. All right, so let's get right into it. And I made sure that I chose a couple from different types of organizations. So let's start out with the Napkin Network. I interviewed Lindsay Gill, and that was episode 77. The Napkin, the Napkin Network is a growing social community of moms helping moms in need. They provide free and easy access to basic baby essentials just diapers, wipes, formula, and all emergency food needs. They have this really cool thing called a pop pantry in Westfield Montgomery Mall, the napkin nook. It's really neat. What you can do is go out with your kids, purchase large size diapers, pull-ups, unscented wipes, cough and cold medicine for babies, and make sure the adults, because we want to make sure that we're getting um, medicine for the moms too, and $25 Target, Visa cards, any monetary donations. Make sure to stop by the Montgomery Mall and check out the Napkin Nook. That's a great, as I said, idea for you and your kids to go and help moms that are in need in this area. When I spoke to Lindsay, I was just floored of how many moms in this area were in need and also the cost of formula. I think it was somewhere around $150, $200 a month for formula, which is so incredibly expensive. The next organization is Chad Tough Defeat DIPG. That's episode 70. I spoke with the co-founder, Jenny Moser, the mother whose son, Michael, was diagnosed with DIPG about a week after his sixth birthday. DIPG is a brain tumor with no effective treatment and a 0% survival rate. So Michael passed away eight and a half months after his heroic battle. Since then, Jenny and her husband have made it their life's mission to make sure to find a cure for DIPG, a DMG, and to help other families that are going through this diagnosis with their children. Typically, it affects children 4 to 11 years old. And in recent years, researchers are understanding the biology of these tumors has significantly improved. So researchers now believe that a cure for DIPG is really within reach, but they need funding for more research. Please think about donating to Chad Tuff, Defeat DIPG, for Giving Tuesday. You can go to chadtuff.org. So then the next organization I'm going to talk about is Empower Her Network. That is episode 73. I spoke with the co-founder, Abby. So their mission is that they work with trafficking survivors and find a path to independence by removing housing barriers, providing advocacy, financial education, and um, uncovering viable career paths. What I found really interesting when I was talking to Abby is how prevalent trafficking is, how prevalent it is here in the U.S. It is a great organization if you want to help women that have been trafficked. You can go to empowerhernetwork.org and find out all the information on how you can donate there. So this one is a close name to Empower for Her, but it's Empower for Life episode 73. Now, Empower for Life 
ensures children in homeless shelters in Baltimore and Harford counties to get and stay happy and healthy. They provide programming for six homeless shelters. And what I realized when I was speaking with Connie from Empower for Life is that we don't realize that our kids come home from school and then they go out and they play and they get all of that extra energy out so they can focus and do their homework. And then when they're doing their homework, they're in a quiet place in our house. These children go from school straight to the shelters and to usually a, this, a room, uh, one area, and full of a lot of other families. So they don't have that time to play like most kids. And then they're having to do their homework with so much noise and it's so hard for them to concentrate. So they're really focusing on helping these kids with different programs. Now, this is a great one that you and your family can do. They are serving this year over 185 children that are living in the homeless shelters this holiday season. And they do expect that number to unfortunately rise. So you can adopt a child this year from the shelter and what you and what you and your kids could do is you adopt the child then you go out and you purchase items for them for the holidays wrap them and send them to the organization and then they will give those items to the parents so they can give gifts to their children on christmas so you can also donate wrapping supplies gift cards and of course your time and support so please go to empower for the number four life MD.org. Next organization is mentoring through athletics. I interviewed the founder, Ashley Montgomery. That is episode 85. Their mission is to connect kids through sports programming and mentoring, tutoring, and additional community support. When I interviewed Ashley, I really loved what this organization was doing to help to build kids' self-esteem. I really was impressed by their athletic programs that they're offering for kids and their mentorship program. They have after school programs, also hold a cleat drive that you can drop off you know, gently used cleats and a school uniform drive as well that you can help with that. So that is also a great organization that you and your family can get involved with. This is a local charity as well. And you can go to mentoringthroughathletics.org. You can donate, uh, you can register, become a mentor, or you can volunteer for a lot of their community outreach events. The next organization is Comfort Cases. I interviewed Rob Shear. This is episode 64. And I interviewed him maybe, gosh, maybe a year or two ago. Uh, we ended up having a, hol a holiday party for Rob a couple years ago to help raise money for his organization. You know, I, I, so many people were touched by Comfort Cases. And Comfort Cases what they do is they inspire communities to bring dignity and hope to youth in foster care. This is achieved by providing our comfort case backpacks and comfort XL duffel bags to youth entering foster care in every state in the U.S., Puerto Rico, and the United Kingdom. And their ultimate goal is to end that the horrific practice of black trash bags being given to the youth to store and transport their belongings in foster care. Jump onto this podcast, listen to Rob's personal story about being in foster care himself and having to use a trash bag. And his story is very inspiring. Him and his husband have now adopted, they have five children that they adopted from foster care. They really are moving the needle for so many kids in the community. There's a lot of different ways that you can get involved within this organization. They have an Amazon wish list. Then this is something you can do with your kids and your neighborhood is you can have a, you can organize a donation drive uh, and you can actually volunteer, bring your kids in to volunteer at comfort cases and stuff the comfort case 
backpacks and duffel bags for the kids. And then you can also always just go on and do, uh, do and always go onto the website and donate there. That's comfortcases.org. The next organization I want to talk about is Interfaith. Now, I spoke with Courtney Hall. This is episode 15. So this is in the beginning when we started this podcast. So you'll just have to bear with me with my very beginning stages of interviewing. Uh, but I, I really do love Interfaith. And the reason why I love them so much is that they help people from, from A to Z. So they provide emergency shelter. Then it's supportive housing. And their essential needs help with clothing and food and employment programs for over 35,000 residents of Montgomery County. There, So this is really, as I said, great. I love speaking with Courtney because really they're helping people, as I said, from A and needing housing to Z to finding employment. You can go on to iworksmc.org. So iworksmc.org if you want to help with interfaith. Okay, so now we have our next organization. And this is very near and dear to my heart. It's service members. As my son says that our veterans are our real life superheroes. And I 100% agree with him there. Building Homes for Heroes. uh, That is episode 63. Building Homes for Heroes builds or modifies homes and gifts them and gifts them mortgage free to injured veterans and first responders and their families. Buildings Homes for Heroes provide services to the recipients in their fa- and their families including counseling, financial literacy, team til- team building to build better lives within their community and help with finding employment as well. This holiday season please think of helping injured vets veterans, and first responders. When I spoke with Tony at Building Homes for Heroes, what I was blown away with is that they custom designed these homes to the needs of that specific injured vet or first responder down to the last detail. And they bring the community in to help these injured vets and first responders. It's amazing. And I can't speak more highly of them. It's a wonderful organization. And they're helping vets and first responders all over the United States. So that is a great one too. And that's buildinghomesforheroes.org. Then we have another military organization, Luke's Wings. I spoke with the co-founder, Fletcher Gill. That was episode 86. And Luke's Wings provides emergency travel planning services and airplane tickets for families and loved ones of wounded, ill, and injured service members, veterans, and fallen officers during hospital recovery and rehabilitation. If you listen to that episode of 86, you're going to find out that the government only will give the loved ones of these service members one or two plane tickets. And for a lot of these wounded, ill, and injured service members, it's a very long recovery and rehabilitation process. So their holiday campaign is no service member spends the holiday alone. So their goal is to make sure that every service member has a loved one with them during the holiday season. Wonderful organization. organization. So please think about uh, donating to them. That's Luke Wing, lukeswings.org. The last one that I'm going to talk about is CAST. That's castwatersafety.org. I spoke with the founder, Liz Hubert. That was episode 56. Did you know that the number one cause of death for children ages one to four is drowning? And drowning happens under a minute. It's quiet and it's fast. And it happens before you know it. Most of the time happen on off swim and pool times, and it can happen within just a small amount of water. So what I found, and I didn't know anything about self-rescue swim lessons until I had my second son. And I signed him up for ISR immediately when he was six months old with a wonderful instructor, Kaylee, in the Bethesda area. 
And what they do is it takes five to eight weeks and you go Monday through Friday and after the, I'm sorry, six to eight weeks and they go Monday through Friday. And after that six to eight weeks, depending on when your child picks it up, they learn how to roll on and float. Uh, So they roll onto their back and they can float in the water. So that gives you time, the precious minutes to find your child and what they do at the very end, because most of drownings happen on non swim hours. They make sure that the child is in their pajamas or like in a full outfit when they're making sure that they can float on their back. It really is quite amazing. My son's been doing ISR since he was six months, as I said, and now he's three years old and he's jumping off the diving board and swimming half the length of the pool. And when he gets tired, he just flips on his back and then swims back over. They have instructors all over the U.S. that provide scholarships for families that cannot afford the classes. That's the first thing that they do. And the second thing that they do is bring awareness to water safety. I'll give you one example. I had absolutely no idea that the puddle jumpers that all the kids wear are not safe in the water. You should never have your kid in a puddle jumper. I didn't know that. It gives your kid a false sense of security when it comes to water. And that's the number one thing that they shouldn't have. They should know that it's dangerous and they should know that if they jump in the water, that they cannot swim. It's things like that, that I was completely unaware of and that can save lives. So CAST is a great, CAST is a great organization too, to think about. Because what you're going to be doing is providing these scholarships for children, um, for families that can't afford these lessons. And these are life-saving lessons. I I hope this gives you some good options for Giving Tuesday. And make sure, too, to scroll through. I think I'm at episode like 88 or 89 at this point of interviews. So there are plenty of organizations for you to choose from. These are a couple that I grabbed. I wanted to grab them for all different types of organizations so I could make sure that I find one that resonates with everyone. I want to know what organization you've decided to give for Giving Tuesday. So please, you know, go jump on to uh, my Instagram at Jamie underscore Truman Charities, find our Giving Tuesday video and Put in the comments what organization you decide to give on for Giving Tuesday because I, because I'm curious. I want to know. I want to know what organization resonated with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Truman Charities Podcast. Until next time. If you liked this episode, please make sure to rate and review our podcast. That is how more people learn about the Truman Charities podcast and our organization. And to make sure you don't miss any of our future episodes, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you'd like to follow Truman Charities, you can follow us on Facebook at Truman Charities, Instagram at Jamie underscore Truman Charities, and check out our website, trumancharities.com.